Good morning, everybody. Today we shall be talking about Wordsworth's Ode to Duty. Wordsworth's poem, Ode to Duty, that is published in 1807, reflects his thoughts on the necessity of observing the principle of duty in one's life. This poem is modeled on Thomas Gray's poem, Ode to Adversity, that was published in 1753, which in turn is modeled on Horace's poem, Ode to Fortune. The poem, Ode to Duty, is about the role and function of the duty in human conduct and behavior in personal and social life. Wordsworth does not usually use abstract objects for his poetry. However, he uses the abstract concept of duty in the present poem. But in this poem, he advocates the need for a restraint of duty on the unchartered and uncontrolled freedom. He advocates the need for restraint of duty on the unchartered or uncontrolled freedom. He emphasizes the moral sentiment of the strict observance of duty in one's life to make it happier, peaceful and meaningful. By duty, he does not mean obeying or following the rules laid down by a religious or a state authority. Rather, his concept of duty constitutes a strong sense of conscience and righteousness. The lines from Seneca's letters 120.10 in the epigraph helps in developing the opening and meaning of the poem, which brings out Wordsworth's idea of duty. It states that one may not be a good person by nature, but if he allows the path of duty for a long time, then he can do only what is good and righteous. In the first stanza, the poet personifies duty as the daughter of the voice of God. This daughter is stern and very strict. She works for the torch that guides the right path for the people and corrects those who do wrong. She saves from the temptations in life and works as a law in itself, like a ruler rules the people through terror. Duty provides calmness, fulfillment and peace to the duty-bound people by protecting them from the trivial struggles of human life. The second stanza tells us that there are some people who govern themselves through the inner sense of conscience of right and wrong. They do not care whether they are being observed by the strict people or the strict rule of duty because they do what needs to be done as responsible citizens. They are guided by the principle of love and truth. But if they go wrong, the duty brings them back to the right path. The third stanza further explains the life of the duty-bound people. Those who conduct their life with the moral obligation of doing good and noble and believe in the great power of love for all forms of life, they live in a peaceful and a happy lifestyle. Such people may not consciously know that they are following the rules of duty. However, duty supports them when they need its help. From the fourth stanza onwards, the poem shifts to the autobiographical note in the life of the poet. Wordsworth mentions that in his youth, he never thought of the rule of duty. He loved and enjoyed limitless freedom of the soul and spent a life guided by his inner wishes and desires. Of course, in following his own inner impulses, he has not broken the limits of moral or sensible behavior. Now, as a grown-up person, he has made his mind to follow the path of duty in a strict sense. The fifth stanza explains that he has decided to follow the path of duty not because of any of the weaknesses or wrongdoings of his past life. Rather, his decision comes out of the quietness of thought and the maturity of mind. Through the experience of life, he has realized that only laws can give and assure the best of freedom. The freedom is achieved and enjoyed within bounds. So, he rejects the unchartered freedom and the chance desires and decides to submit to the duty to enjoy a permanent status of a peaceful and blessed life. The sixth stanza develops the argument of the poem further. 
that he says that he wants to follow the path of duty not because of his weakness but he has taken a stern decision to the duty to enjoy a permanent state of peaceful and a blissful life the seventh stanza develops a central argument of the poem the relationship between god nature and man for wordsworth god is not limited to any religion and especially not only to christianity for him the notion of god represents a controlling power that puts the things in proper order in this stanza he calls duty as the strict divine lawgiver the objects in nature follow the strict rules designed for them the cycle of the seasons of nature never deviates from their given course the flowers bloom at the right time the stars and other objects in the space to which wordsworth calls as ancient heaven move in their designated orbit or route if they start moving as per their whims and wishes or unchartered freedom the universe will lose its harmony and will get destroyed it is due to the strict rule of duty this heaven is fresh and strong even after millions of years and will continue to remain so in the future years to come the nature strictly follows the dictates of duty and creates and preserves the natural harmony intact the human beings are the blessed and beloved inmates of nature and hence they too should follow the path of the duty in order to make their life happy and more meaningful the eighth and the final stanza of the ode strongly justifies the poet's decision to submit himself willingly and consciously in the charge of duty He requests the daughter of the voice of God that is duty to put an end to his flaws of following the path of unrestricted freedom and desires to make him wise humble and thoughtful he asks her to bless him with the true spirit of his self sacrifice it means a journey from the selfish egotism to the self selfless altruism He is now assured that only reason and not mere spontaneous impulse can make one responsible and duty bound inmates of nature. He urges the duty to make him her bondman that is a slave rather a devotee who will live a content life in the light of truth provided by duty. The poem continues with Wordsworth's mission of establishing a man's relation with nature. In his immortality ode Wordsworth discusses the relationship of a child with nature the child is not aware of the sense of duty however he is taken in by the awe of the nature and enjoys the bounties of the nature the same child when becomes adult understands the powers of nature in its systematic duty bound course of action If immortality ode sings the song of innocence ode to duty sings the song of experience of Wordsworth a child lives a carefree life of bliss as it leads its life without malice or hatred against others an adult also can live a life of bliss and happiness of course not through innocence but through a conscious decision to follow a life of restraint responsibility and dutifulness to be helpful and hopeful to be happy and make others happy the ode is written in eight stanzas of eight lines each each stanza repeatedly follows the same rhyme scheme of the first stanza which is a b a b c c d d the poem uses poetic devices and figures of speech such as epitaph apostrophe personification hyperbole alliteration simile metaphor and allusions i hope you had enjoyed the discussion on wordsworth's very famous ode ode to duty bye for now